Hey book peeps, thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to explore, well I say explore, today I am going to show you my six star reads. I have been going through all of my books across the 20 years worth of proper reading that I've been doing and re-evaluating, re-rating, re-reading the whole nine yards and I have finally been able to narrow down my six star reads. Now, what I'm considering when I am putting a six star rating on something is how compelling the characters are, how exciting the relationships, how unique the world building is, how engaging the plot is, how amazing or just right the pacing is, and how long it kind of it sticks with me after I read it, like how much I care about the characters, my obsession with it, all of that. So without further ado, let's get this party started. So, first up on my six star reads. Now, this is one in part of a trilogy. You don't necessarily have to read them in any kind of order, but this one sticks out for me more than the other two and that is Mythos by Stephen Fry. And this one, like between, there are so many characters and each god or hero has such an amazing personality and you get to learn in depth about the relationships around those gods and heroes and monsters, all of that stuff. And it's just so chuckle worthy. It makes me laugh. It makes me smile. It tickles that ancient Greek itch that I have always got. <laughs> and oh, I've listened to the audiobooks by Stephen Fry and he's such an amazing narrator. I love him, absolutely love him. So with Mythos, it's like multiple POVs across like many gods. You don't need to have any existing knowledge of gods to enjoy it for what it is and it's like Stephen Fry has tried to create like a very like linear timeline with it going from using different pieces of like whether it's Homer's like Iliad and the Odyssey and like many other different sources to create this timeline to make it a lot easier to follow and sort of grasp onto, but it's like it's like reading an ancient ver like version of an EastEnders episode or something. There's so much quirk, so much of it, and I wouldn't say it's plot driven or character driven. It's a nice balance between the two. The pacing is really good, and it's not too much. There's not like uber amounts of info dumping. It, it comes at a really, really nice pace. Super, super enjoyable read. So six stars, absolutely. Oh, something else, a little keynote. At the very end of these, I will tag on two, which I'm sure a fair few of you will notice are missing <laughs> from this list. But my biggest rule whilst going through these for six star reads was finding books that are either standalone or the very first book that starts off the series because I believe that six star books that come later on in a series, even if it's the second book or the seventh book, you still have that foundation that was put out by the pre-existing books. So even if you think it doesn't necessarily contribute to a six star rating, you still have pre-existing knowledge of the world and some of the characters and stuff like that. So I think it still adds to it rather than a standalone just being like, boom, six stars, like pull the rug out from under you, ass on the ground, jaw on the floor, just an amazing book. So yes, I'm sure, like I said, some of you will notice that there are a couple very obvious and big ones missing, 
that I will put on at the very, very end. But because they're not necessarily standalone or the start of a series, that's why they're not in the initial lineup. Okay, next one. So sticking with the Greek mythology, sort of reimagining, retelling, A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. I love the series, yes, but the first book, six stars. It is fantastic. There is just enough spice. It's not too much. You've got that, it's not really enemies to lovers, but it's more like the forbidden love, forbidden fruit and all of that. And I like how it's set in New Athens. And I like the personality that has been put into a lot of the gods, especially Hermes. Oh my god, Hermes in this book. Honestly, I love Hermes in this book. He like he refers to Persephone as Sethi. <laughs> He's just so quirky. But yes, really good pacing. It is again a nice combination of plot and character driven. So I'll have like the touch of the ancients, even though it's set in modern day Greece modern day Athens, new Athens, and how the ancient gods tie in to a modern day Athens. It's really, really intriguing. And the love interest is one of my favorite love stories of all time, Hades and Persephone. I mean, come on, come on. Goddess of spring with the god of death and deep earth. Like, really? It's just, oh. It's so perfect. So perfect. So yes. Touch of Darkness. I know the last book in this series is actually coming out this year. It keeps getting pushed, but I think, I think it has been finalized for the beginning of April this year. So fingers crossed. Whoop. Next up was my very first um, Lara Thalassa book that I ever read, and that's Rhapsodic, part of the Bargainer series. There are three books in the series. Um, I like the first one more only because of the way it jumps around. So you, okay, so it's not quite a dual POV, but you jump around from the past and the present to kind of catch up as to, to why the two main characters, the female main character and male main character are kind of like locking heads. Like, it doesn't start out necessarily enemies to lovers, but it evolves to enemies to lovers. It's a, it's a really funny dynamic, and their banter is awesome. And the lead character, the lead female character, Callie, or Calypso, she plays a, she's a siren, and oh, she's amazing. I love her, and she has this really cool best friend who's like an enchantress or sorceress or something. But yes, lots of banter. I'd say it's a bit more of like a dark fantasy romance kind of feel to it. Um, super, super enjoyable. There is fae in it, but it also works with like ley lines and the fae aren't part of the human world and it's based in like the modern day world. So that's kind of nice too. You don't get that too much with fantasy. Actually, I find it is really it's, it's rare to find ones that are set in modern day that actually work really well, and I think this one works amazingly well. Next up, my most recent six star read by Bryn Weaver, Butcher and Blackbird. So this is, this was my first dark rom-com. I didn't even know that dark rom-coms were a thing as far as genres go, but Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. Rowan, he's the main male character, and I think it is, it's, I'm sure it's Sloan. I'm sure it's Sloan. Bear with me, bear with me. Yes, Sloan. Like, when I say banter, <laughs> ah, no book does banter quite like this. And if you do the audiobook, you have a very sexy Irishman doing uh, Rowan's. <laughs> so yeah, dual point of view. Uh, Rowan has a sexy Irish accent and they're basically, they're both serial killers and 
they get the hots for each other. So it's definitely not enemies to lovers. It's more almost rivals, I think, to lovers would be the best way to put it. There's going to be another book out in this series that doesn't come out until June, I think, and that's Leather and Lark, but I can't get enough of this book. I read it twice this month alone. I read it the first time and then literally straight off the back of finishing it, I read it again. I just, I loved it that much. But yeah, set in modern day, really engaging plot and it's a really great pace. I don't think it slows down at any point. It doesn't get boring. You're not like trying to drag yourself through it or anything. Every single last page is just delicious. It's either funny, sexy, dark, or disgusting. <laughs> or violent. It's such an awesome, awesome blend of characteristics to have in one book. The Mindfuck series. Now, this one was a bit of a strange one to actually decide on whether or not it counted at the beginning part of this list or to tag on to the couple of books I have at the very end of this list because technically this is five books all rolled into one. I remember reading it and I fell in love with it like from the get-go. It really didn't take me long to decide that this was gonna be like a five well six star read. Do I count it as the start or do I count it as one book? Hmm? Any ideas? What do we think? Because that is one book. Mindfuck series. So with this one, almost similar to Butcher Blackbird, a little bit. So you got your female serial killer who starts dating a male FBI agent who is in turn hunting for her. <laughs> So it is an awesome dynamic, um, equal, very plot driven. I mean, the characters are interesting and the romance and love interest, that's very interesting, but very, very much plot driven. And it's amazing. I really enjoyed this one. I like how it all comes together at the end and statements or proclamations of love, how they're made is just fantastic. The relationships between the characters, not just um, the love interests, but there's like their side characters and stuff, and those relationships are equally entertaining and fun. <laughs> so definitely, Mindfuck series by St. Abbey, Midnight Library by Matt Haig, definitely a six star read. Completely the other direction as far as like genres go, contemporary and magical fiction. <laughs> according to my Alexa, <laughs> or speaker wench, as I like to call her. But yes, The Midnight Library. So this one, I think it, it sets a beautiful reality of things. I think that's why it's a six star read. It really it resonates with me. I think about it almost every single day. I wouldn't say it's not so much, it's hard to say really. I think, again, it's there, there's a balance between it being plot and character driven. It's more about driving home the whole, like kind of the moral of the story, like a point of the book more than it is anything else. And putting that mindset into like bite-sized pieces for us to really like, you know, take on board examine, consume, and hopefully put into practice. So I think it was just beautifully written, really good pace, really, really intriguing premise, and I just love the book. Absolutely love it. Six stars. Next, my first psychological thriller. I was so lucky. So None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. Definitely a six star. Total page turner. Keeps you going. Really good pace. You wonder what's happening. It's not super predictable. Uh, the writing style is really, really cool too. It's written out like, kind of like a Netflix documentary to read. So really, really fun. Um, the characters are super compelling and the relationships that sort of spring up and develop and aspects of relationships that are revealed and all of that stuff. It's all very sort of jaw droppingly amazing. So again, amazing just amazing how many times can i say amazing about one book a lot i guess but yeah six stars so the last two as far as like 
the ones that are at the beginning of a series or standalone books. These ones are probably going to be a little bit more obvious. I'll probably get some eye rolls here. So let's just jump right in. Fourth Wing. Yes, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros is definitely a six star read for me. Iron Flame, not so much. I'd probably rank that somewhere in at the four star mark. But as the beginning of a series, that's something completely brand new as an epic fantasy, totally new world with the dragons, the relationships, the love interest, the drama, the action, the tears. I just, I love all of it. I enjoyed the pacing. I, I enjoyed the unique world building, such an engaging plot, like compelling characters, really exciting relationships. Like I was shaking and sweating and crying and hyperventilating at like regular intervals all throughout this book and it sticks with me and as much as Iron Flame wasn't quite what we wanted as far as the sequel this one was still a freaking amazing start to the series like just yes next one key the eye rolls people House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. I know a lot of people say it's like all info dumping and hard for them to really, you know, care about the characters, but I was totally the opposite with this first book. I loved it from the get-go. I fell right in love. All of the characters, I didn't feel like there was like info dumping like crazy on my brain. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know everybody. I enjoyed the fact that we jumped straight into the the stuff with Danica and the pack of devils and instantly falling in love with Lahaba and Syrinx. Just awesome. And I like the fact that the love interest wasn't like too over the top. I like the fact that it's kind of like a side story in this one and it's more about the mystery and the thrill and adventure of like trying to figure out stuff. And obviously if you know, you know, heartbreak at the end. So yes. I think this was amazing. This one was six stars. House of Sky and Breath, I probably would put in at sort of 4.5 stars. And the most recent one, House of Flame and Shadow, honestly, like three stars. I was not impressed with that one. But this one, six stars. Absolutely. Now, for the two that are six star reads, but not at the beginning or standalone. And that is... Kingdom of Ash. Just wow. <laughs> but would I still think it was a six star read had I not read Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Heir of Crown of Midnight, Heir of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and then this one. I don't know. Because those big moments that happen I don't know if they would really still hit the same or an impact the same, tear me apart the same, but I still think it's a six star book. But as the last book in the series, so yeah, you decide. Does it really count or not so much? And also, granted I kind of did this out of order, but Queen of Shadows definitely another six star. Just epic. So much action happens in this book. So many things. But again, you're waiting for so many of these things to happen because of all the books that came before. So it doesn't really count. You decide. And then last but not least, A Court of Mist and Fury. Six stars. But again, you're still waiting for a lot to happen that ha from like the first book, right? So does it really count, guys? Does it really count? Oh. So that's three books that are part of the way or at the end of a series. Nine books that are either at the start of a series or standalone. But all in all, that's 12 books. Out of 20 years of reading, I've got a dozen six star reads. If that doesn't prove how much six star books are gold dust, then I don't know what does. But hey, if you guys have read these books, let me know what you think. If you guys haven't, or you have your own six star reads that you'd like me to read, 
then please comment below and yeah because i am always looking for more for my t my tbr and my hunt for more six star reads will continue in the meantime make sure you like share subscribe all the fun youtube stuff that you know how to do and i will see you next week my bookish peeps have a wicked one Mwah.